All right, are we, we're recording. All right, um, hello everyone. Uh, today is gonna be a very, very simple little video. Um, we're gonna be covering, um, you know, output distributions and TensorFlow and PyTorch and how to turn the, the output of, uh, of a model, you know, a deep neural network into um, a distribution so we can sample actions for a reinforcement learning agent. I mean, there are many, many use cases for, for creating a distribution from the output. Um, so typically outputs for, for um, of actions are either in the continuous space or the categorical space. And the way that we, we use each of those is different because uh, for one, we have to construct a categorical distribution and the other, we have to construct a normal distribution. Um, so we're just gonna go over both. Let's look at the documentation, where, uh, how to access it. And, you know, I'm, I'm really just going over some documentation, a couple code examples. I'm not really um, the most qualified to be going over this, but um, I mean, if you're here, obviously, hopefully I'll be able to help you out. So for, for TensorFlow, um, we're gonna go ahead and go to tensorflow.org and we're gonna go to resources um, and we're gonna go to libraries and extensions and we're gonna go to probability, which is TensorFlow probability. And you know, it has like a little quick start guide and you can look at the guided tutorials and like look at the distributions, which is what we're gonna be going over today. And you can go to the API and go to distributions and we're gonna be using two for today. First one we're gonna be going over is categorical distribution, um, you know, for discrete actions. And, uh, where is it? Oh, and, and normal distribution for our continuous actions. Um, and there's examples in here. And yeah, let's go ahead and leave that. And for PyTorch, just go to Google and type in torch.distributions. And, um, you know, they have their own quick start guide here. And, you know, they have some, some code to show you some stuff. It's, you know, very useful stuff. We're just gonna go over it, you know, in video format for today. Um, so first thing you need to do is, uh, we're gonna assume we have the output from the model. And I'm just gonna construct, um, you know, fake outputs from a model, you know, just create a tensor, which is supposed to be the output for a model. And, you know, we're, I'm just gonna call it agent logits um, because, you know, a, a model outputs logits and, you know, that network is supposed to be our agent. Anyways, so for TensorFlow, we need to import TensorFlow probability as TFP, um, import TensorFlow as TF and import NumPy as NP. And actually for these examples, we don't need NumPy at all. Um, Anyways, so we assume our continuous agent, sorry, this is supposed to be discrete agent, um, takes a state as observation, um, as input, and outputs logits based on that input. And we're just gonna say, all right, we th let's assume that these are the logits that are network outputs, which is, you know, just a few, a few random values and we put, we put that in a TensorFlow tensor and call them that agent logits. So to construct our categorical distribution, if we wanna take um, discrete actions, um, we need to construct a categorical distribution and it only takes a single argument and the argument, it takes the logits, which is uh, the output from a model. So it'll, so all it really needs is the logits from any model and it'll construct a categorical distribution for us. Um, assuming that, you know, each one of these is an output class. So, you know, it, it will construct a categorical distribution with three classes and, you know, um, and it only takes the log odds as input. So uh, when we pass that argument to t uh, TensorFlow probability dot distribution dot categorical, it returns a discrete distribution to us. So if we have this distribution now, we can go ahead and sample some actions. So we have, a distribution um, and we want it to return an action for us. So we just say discrete distribution dot sample and we can have, you know, one sample or six samples or, you know, any number of sample. 
And if you don't pass it an argument, it returns a single sample. So that will be our actions. And um, so that's how we get uh, action from our distribution. And we can go ahead and find out what's the log probability of taking that action um, given that distribution. So we can just go ahead and call it discrete, discrete distribution dot log prob um, and um, give it the action that we want to find the log probability of you know taking that action specific action. So I'm just labeling that log prob of you know the action. And um, we can also just find normal probability, so not log prob, which is just discrete distribution dot probability or sorry dot prob, and it takes the action as input and it lets us know what's the probability of taking that action given this distribution and um, we can also find the entropy of our data just of our distribution so we can call discrete distribution dot entropy and this takes no arguments because entropy is a measure of the distribution not taking you know a specific action and um, from that distribution so entropy is actually a measure across the whole distribution and um, the measure of entropy, um, I'm, I'm just gonna try to recall it like from the top of my head, which is the negative sum of all the log probabilities of all actions. So let's say we have these three actions. Um, we sum over the, the, the log probability of this plus the log probability of this plus the log probability of this action. Um, you know, selecting those actions, um, when you sum that up, that's the entropy. And if we have high entropy, um, that means that our, um, our distribution is very uncertain about which action to take. And if we have low entropy, it means that our distribution is very certain of specific actions to take. Um, and you know that will come in handy for maximum entropy reinforcement learning in future tutorials. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play on this and we're gonna see um, I, it print out the output the specific action it took the log probability of that action and the probability of taking that action so um, we see that and so you're gonna see that the entropy is always gonna be the same because it's actually always the same distribution but you're gonna see we're gonna be sampling separate actions right here we took um, the action with index 2 which is our third action um, and the log probability of taking that action is um, negative 0.13 so it's low and the probability is 0.87 um, so I guess with respect to the other ones that's fairly high so um, we'll see that the action will change um, and you know obviously these are going to change as well depending on which action select it selects but the log probability of taking any one given action is always going to be the same given that distribution so um, you know action one and it's much what is it much less likely, like 4%. Oh yeah, because like that's negative 1.3, so it's the most unlikely. Um, but yeah, so that's how you would do it in TensorFlow. And now let's go ahead over um, a continuous distribution in TensorFlow. So uh, we're gonna construct our agent logits from you know our fake model the same exact way, um, but our continuous distribution when we use tfp.distributions.normal, um, it actually takes two arguments instead of taking the logits, like the categorical distribution. Um, what this actually does is it takes the location and the scale um, as arguments. So what the location is, the location of the mean, okay? And uh, the scale is the, the standard deviation. So, you know, a normal distribution, it takes, uh, um, a mean, which is typically mu, and a standard de deviation, which is typically sigma. Um, so anytime we're gonna construct a normal distribution, we need those two values. So what we go ahead and actually do is, I think I can remove, and let's see if that runs when I remove, and I don't know why I have it as, or maybe I could just put float, actually, that would actually say, maybe there was a reason I had that type conversion in there. <clears throat> um, so our agent outputs uh, you know, a tensor with two values in it, and we're gonna go ahead and just index each of those values, and you know, just for the sake of simplicity, it's, it's nice to consider the first value as the mean, and the second value as the standard deviation. So we take our agent logits, and we index the first value for
for our location and we index the second value um, for our standard deviation and we call tf.math.abs which is absolute function because you cannot have a negative standard deviation that doesn't make sense um, and you know it'll throw an error so um, you have to go ahead and take the, the argument for your scale and make sure that that's positive. You can call absolute, you can square the value, you can do something like that. Um, but I just called absolute on it. So now we've constructed a continuous distribution using tfp.distributions.normal and given it our two arguments from our output of our model. And we just, uh, the same way as the discrete distribution, we can just sample actions. Um, we can, and given actions, we can find out the log probability of a certain action the probability of a certain action, which is continuous distribution dot prob, or we can find the entropy of that distribution, which is continuous distribution dot entropy. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and run that. So everything is the same except for like the construction of the actual distribution. So, um, you know, the entropy is always going to be the same as you can see, but the specific actions that we're sampling since it's the continuous distribution, um, We've now constructed a distribution where the mean is negative 0.8 and the standard deviation is 1.3 because we call absolute on this negative 1.3. Um, so we're going to be getting value centered around negative 0.8 and with the standard deviation of negative 1.3. So if we, we run a few, you see that a lot of them are centered around negative 0.8, but since this is, this is such a huge standard deviation, they're everywhere, but if we were to, you know, minimize that standard deviation, you can see that it's very closely now centered to negative point eight. Okay. Um, and quick little thing, I don't honestly know how it's constructing, like uh, how it's measuring entropy, um, in here. So, uh, the difference between figuring out entropy for continuous versus a discrete distribution, it's essentially the same, you know, as far as like um like the concept of what it's measuring, but the, there, I mean, there's an issue with measuring uh, entropy in a continuous distribution. And the issue is that, so, um, you know, selecting any value is like uh, selecting uh, a random variable um, from that distribution. But when we have a discrete distribution, we know what all the possible actions are. But for a continuous distribution, we have, a, you know, unlimited or an infinite number of potential choices to make. So um, the probability of taking any action is essentially zero because uh, you know you you take the integral of that probability um, probability density function um, at any one point and you sum it up for all the actions. But you know a simple way to do it, like if you were to do it by hand, um, would be like to take the indefinite integral. Um, but as you take it for like smaller and smaller intervals, um, close to whatever value you're trying to determine with the, what the probability of selecting that one specific thing is like, it's very, it becomes smaller and smaller going towards zero. So I don't know how they do it like inside of TensorFlow in general, but, um, I, I don't think they're taking like the indefinite integral or whatever, but, um, yeah, it would it would be it would be cool to know. That's you don't need to know that in general. I'm just I'm just saying. You know, I don't know how they do it. Um, it was a little tricky. <laughs> um, it, I mean, it would be difficult to do it by hand. Anyways, um, but it's the same thing. So we're now just gonna hop over to PyTorch and do the same thing. So it's essentially the exact same thing as TensorFlow. Like it's almost a hundred percent identical. The only difference between uh, going with TensorFlow or going with PyTorch um, is that in TensorFlow, we, we can find the probability of taking an action or we can find the log probability of taking an action. And in Torch, in, in PyTorch, we can only like uh, find the log probability of an action, not the actual probability of the action. But that doesn't matter for us right now. Anyways, <clears throat> you know, I, was hope I, was, I hope I was clear with that entropy explanation, even though I know I wasn't. But let's go ahead and try to construct a categorical um, distribution from PyTorch. So from torch.distributions, import categorical, import torch. Uh, so we're going to have, you know, a fake 
output from our agent. So we're gonna get some agent logits. So we're gonna call torch.tensor and we're just gonna construct uh, the fake output which is negative 1.6 and negative 0.2 and those are agent logits. And just like in TensorFlow, it takes the same um, argument. So we call categorical with, uh, you know, the, we pass the, the categorical, um, sorry, as, as our argument for the logits, we pass in the agent logits that we have. And that's gonna construct a categorical distribution. I just call that policy categorical distribution. And to sample a specific action, we just say policy categorical distribution dot sample. Um, and to find the, the log probability of taking a selected action, we call policy categorical distribution dot log prob um, of that action. And for entropy, we just call the the distribution and call dot entropy on it to find the entropy of the whole distribution. So policy categorical distribution dot entropy. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit play uh, to run the cell. And you'll see that, um, you know, it tells us what the entropy is, what the selected action it took was, and what's the probability of taking that action. Sorry, the log probability of taking that action. Um, So, so you can see that like the, since these are like the log odds, uh, you know, whenever we take the zeroth one, it sh we should get a value very close to that value. And whenever we select the first one, uh, we should get a value close to negative 0.2. And obviously the negative 0.2 is gonna be a lot more frequent because it's a lot more probable. Um, so you can see, every time we select one, we get values close to negative 0.2 and we get that value much, much more frequently. Um, and we can make, you know, third class, uh, you know, we can uh, add a third class and make it extremely probable. Like if we have it, give it a value of 0.1, that's going to be extremely probable and it's going to be popping up and let's see. Oh, whoops. There we go. Okay. Um, I'll be completely honest, I'm a little bit confused with the output now at this point. Um, let's just go back to the, the initial way because I don't want to have to like think through it because I don't do video edits. Uh, I try to just do them in one fell swoop. Um, but you know, we got back to it. Anyways, so that's how you would do a categorical distribution using PyTorch. And um, let's go over a continuous distribution. Um, in PyTorch, so from torch.distributions, import normal, because we're gonna construct a normal distribution, import torch. So um, we, we we create our sample agent output, which is our agent logits, which is gonna construct a torch.tensor um, with the input as negative 1.3 and negative 0.25. And just like in TensorFlow, our normal distribution uh, takes a location and a scale, which is our mean and our standard deviation. And our mean can be whatever value our um, agent outputs for that. So we're gonna use the zeroth index of our agent logits as the mean and the first index as the standard deviation. But look, whoops, um, our agent gave us negative, um, negative standard deviation. That doesn't make sense. Um, so we have to make sure that we call torch.absolute on our argument for scale, or I mean, or I don't know if there's a torch dot square or whatever, or um, but I mean we have to, we have we have to make it positive. So once we call a function that turns our standard deviation um, positive, we can pass it to scale as an argument, <clears throat> and now we have a continuous distribution returned, um, for, you know, because we just constructed it. Um, but you know, take, sampling actions is the same way. We call our continuous distribution dot sample. If we want to know the log probability of a specific action, we call our continuous distribution dot log probability of a specific action. And if we want to measure the entire distribution for entropy, we call continuous distribution for entropy and we get our entropy back. And um, just gonna run it a few times. So the, is this the same as the last one? No, it's not. So, 
the the mean is going to be negative 1.3 and the standard deviation is going to be 0.25 you know away from the mean uh, so we're going to get a lot of them centered around negative 1.3 and um, as you can see they're they're very closely centered to negative 1.3 you know, like one point negative one point three seven, negative one point three eight, negative one point three six, very close, negative one point four three, point six nine, point one negative point one five. Oh that's super far away. Negative point nine four, um negative one point um one three. So yeah, that's how you would do it. And this is just uh sampling um actions from a distribution and finding the log probability of those actions and also finding the entropy of any specific distribution that we construct and we went over how to do it for normal distributions which are you know for uh, continuous output uh, or for continuous actions and for discrete distributions which is for um, you know categorical um, actions and we did it both in PyTorch and TensorFlow I hope this was able to um, help clarify how to um, take actions uh, given output from a model and you know, in future tutorials, we'll go over how to incorporate that into um, the algorithms for an actual agent. Um, but I think that's that's it for this one. Uh, I would hope I was able to help clarify anything. And you know, you guys know where the resources are: TensorFlow Probability and Torch Distributions. Um, go and check those out if you guys need to. And I will see you guys in future videos where we'll go over some algorithms finally. All right, peace out.